Tonight, RFL focuses on the New York State Republican Party and its prospects as we approach a key gubernatorial election and the 2014 midterms. First up tonight, a live interview with Rob Astorino, widely seen as the GOP's front runner to take on Governor Andrew Cuomo this fall. Also tonight in what's expected to be a banner year for Republicans across the country, we'll talk to the top man in New York's GOP, Ed Cox, on the challenges the party faces here in the Empire State. And later, the former Congresswoman, once again running for her old seat in D.C., our live RFL interview with Nan Hayworth as she aims to poach a Hudson Valley district and flip it from blue to red. Good evening on this very busy Thursday, February 20th, and welcome to a special edition of RFL. I'm Dominic Carter, in tonight for Richard French. Now, for more on the New York GOP, the state of the party, and its leadership, we are going to have a GOP panel tonight. But first, we're going to start with a one-on-one -on -one interview with former Queens Congressman Bob Turner. He joins us right now. The congressman stand one election after the resignation of Anthony Weiner. He was also a candidate for the U.S. Senate in 2012. We'll be joined by another guest, Richard St. Paul, in just a little bit. And we're also going to that live interview with Rob Astorino in the field, but let's start with you, Congressman. One, the rap on your party is that you guys can do good in some congressional districts here in New York, but winning statewide is just a no-go. How do you turn that around, and is that accurate? Well, we, we have to pick our shots where we find them. We, we are outnumbered about three to one on registration. Uh, and, and certainly uh, the, the city is, uh, weighs the whole state, and that's very, very lopsided. Uh, but if you go through some of our competitive races, we do have some shots out here in the, in the first uh, CD. Uh, I, I think um, uh, Steve Israel is not as comfortable as he once was, and I think that might be a really good race for us there. Um, I think we preserve the seats we have. This is on a congressional basis. We um, have some opportunities. Uh, I think we could see Nan coming back. Nan Hayes. Really? Um, uh, that was a, a close one. And um, uh, the Dems have uh, a good candidate there. But um, uh, I think uh, that's, that's a, a shot. And. Um, you know, Anne-Marie Burkle uh, left and, and sadly is not coming back up in the Ithaca area. Okay, so if I said to you tonight, and for our audience watching at home, what is the state of the Republican Party in New York? What would your answer be? Somewhat disorganized. And um, the, the workers, the people that really put the party together, tend to be a little more ideological and a little more inflexible than what you might need to be to win in New York. This is a big challenge for in the selection of candidates and uh, in an overall uh, strategy. I, I certainly saw it in um, my uh, uh, senatorial uh, bid. Um, I think, as it always has been, is, is messaging. Uh, we haven't been particularly good at that. And that is particularly frustrating when you, when you realize that in our polls, about 60% of the people agree with Republican positions, jobs, economy, um, almost all the major issues. Yet when it comes down to voting, that's almost reversed. We're not getting the message across. Well, hold that thought for just one second. We're going to talk to the chair of the state Republican Party, Ed Cox, who's standing by in the green room. We'll talk to him in just a minute. But just between me and you, okay, just between the, the two of us, is Andrew Cuomo beatable? Um, just between us now. I think it's going to take some more flubs on his part. He's been pretty well behaved his last uh, comments about driving, getting Republicans out of the state, you know, and that, that type thing didn't help him. Uh, but he's capable of, of a few errors here that, that could upset things. 
And with a dynamic candidate, a and on the right side of some of these issues, and a way to articulate it, yes, it, it's a tough one. I, I, no doubt about it. And when you consider the organization and the war chest and all that that he has, um, not impossible. But, but, but already your party seems to have a problem. I mean, we're, we're going to talk to Mr. Astorino tonight, but the, the problem that your party is facing is you have a number of candidates, at least two I can think about, Astorino and possibly Donald Trump, and each man is demanding that the field is cleared for them. So how can you, how can you take the governor's mansion when you guys can't even right now get past the primary? Well, whether we'll have a primary uh, uh, or not, I can't say. But um, uh, I think uh, you know, Mr. Trump uh, is an interesting uh, candidate. Um, he kind of gets close to the altar, but never quite uh, makes that <laughs> vow, as you know. Uh, and I think we're going to see more of the same here, but perhaps not. Uh, I think in um, uh, Rob Astorino, we have the real deal. Um, he, he has established himself as a straight shooter, um, an honest broker, and, and a guy who gets the job done. Um, uh, I think um, he will prevail, and uh, at the end of the day, it'll probably be a wide open field for him. But if he but wants it. But you still <laughs> got the general election. What I yes. would like to do at this point, Mr. Turner, we appreciate your time. Stand by for just Thank a you. second. We are now going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be going to my colleague Andrew Whitman in the field for his live conversation with guess who? Rob Astorino. Stay with us. <laughs> 